sticky navigations can be tough to get right, but with the help of Lennis Smooth Scroll and the Greensock Animation platform, you can easily create this type of navigation experience. So by the end of this video, you'll be able to knock out something like this. So what are you waiting for? Let's get started. If you enjoyed this video, check out designcourse.com where you can learn UI, UX, CSS, and more with my custom interactive platform that makes learning fun and easy. All right, welcome everybody. Here we go, let's get started. So basically, um, this is the starting point of the lesson that I have prepared for us today. Um, we can see it's fixed, but we're not doing any of this fancy stuff right here like this. And the reason we wanna do this and add a white background is because if we get low down here, like any further down the page, let me get this up, sorry about that, I did not mean to click that, like this, I, or actually it's, if this were darker, like a darker background, we wouldn't be able to see this type, like the black type right here. That's why we wanna add a, you know, some sort of a overlay or underlay that would give us enough contrast for this type. And plus we can also do cool stuff like this where we click this and that will bring us all back to the top. So here's how we do it. First, we're gonna take a look at the HTML. This is the starting point. I didn't feel like just writing out all this from scratch. It's fairly straightforward. We have a whole header element right here. Then we have a wrapper element that is wrapped around almost everything except for this nav BG element. We'll talk about that in a second. And this wrapper element, oh, the only thing that's is the max width of 12, uh, 1200 pixels or so. And that way we also center it so that it's a fixed width container. It's not completely fluid. And then we have our logo. And by the way, this wrapper class, we have a display flex with uh, justify content space between. Um, that way it separates the logo, the navigation, and then the get a quote. Now we do also have a uh, SVG element with a mask applied to it. So we have, if I look at the or zoom up, we have this mask element, which is wrapped around this SVG element right here. And this mask element just has an overflow of hidden applied to it. That way we can move it on the Y axis and it kind of comes in from nowhere. Just to show you from the final result, if I zoom up, you can see how it kind of comes from nowhere. And that's because of that, the parent container is overflow hidden. Um, and then we have this nav BG down here and that's actually the element. It is position absolute in CSS and it is, um, let me, if I show you real quickly, nav BG, position absolute, top zero, left zero. We have a width of 100%, height of 100% and a Z index of negative one. And the parent container is position relative uh, based on this nav BG so that, um, that's kind of like a trick. Uh, whenever you have a position absolute element inside of a container, you want and you want it to be in relation or relative to that container, you put position relative on the parent and then position absolute on this element here that you want to say fixated within that parent. Um, and the reason we have this is because I we're going to use Greensock to target this and change that background specifically. You can also do cool stuff like give it a blur with a filter, um, and it won't affect the other content on top like the type. All right, so hopefully you kind of understand what I mean by that. But then we have an empty section so we can scroll down a little bit. Okay, now I am also importing uh, Smooth Scroll from Lennis. I'm using that a lot these days. And this is just the very quick boilerplate code that they give you from their GitHub. Um, if you don't know what Lennis is, it's a Smooth Scroll JavaScript library, a very low uh, kilobytes in, in, I have videos dedicated to it. So, with this amount of code and importing through a CDN, we have the smooth scroll already. So if we, we use our mouse scroll wheel, it, it gives us this nice little kind of locomotive uh, scroll effect. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I am importing Gr Greensock Animation Platform right here. You can just go to uh, Google and type GSAP uh, 3 CDN and the first one will give you this right here. And then also scroll trigger. We have to import that because it's not a part of the core Greensock library. And scroll trigger will allow us you know, to do the actual scroll based animation that takes place on that header. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to set, we're gonna use the set method, uh, gsap.set, and we're gonna take our nav BG and what we're gonna say is we're gonna give it a background color of white. And we're also gonna do an opacity of zero. All right, so that what this doing this is doing when when the JavaScript loads, it's setting these uh, CSS properties to the nav BG element by default, or like right on start. 
Um, we're gonna do the same thing here with GSAP set for the SVG itself, which is that little back to top arrow, that black arrow. And we're going to say Y percent negative 100. All right, so that will hide it essentially. Um, right now it is opacity zero. We're going to remove that and there we go. So if now that I remove the opacity zero from there, we could see what it looks like right here. They're overlapping. I but when we as soon as we set this back to y percent negative 100 it goes away okay next up we're going to create a timeline and a timeline in green sock animation platform or gsap is a way for us to create more complex sequence based animations and that's what we're gonna be doing because we're moving things over and then we're showing that little thing and we're also changing the background uh, so let's get that going so const timeline equals gsap dot timeline we open up the objects for the options, which is uh, optional, um, but we're gonna add the scroll trigger to this timeline. Now a scroll trigger, by the way, like this, can be added to a simple tween. If you know anything about GreenSock Animation Platform, you can create animations based on timelines or just simple tweens, which you'll see in a second. Um, and so what we're gonna say is we're, we're gonna start this animation, any animations that are tied to this timeline uh, at the top, plus equals 200 pixels. All right, so when a user scrolls down about 200 pixels, then we're going to start changing stuff with a white background and all that good stuff. You could make it immediately just by saying type, oops, that had two equals, just by, but just by saying top rather, um, but I don't want that. We're gonna give a little bit of a, a positive offset of uh, um, 200, okay. Next up, we have to have an end for this, and it just all it has to be is plus equal one, and that's because it's just a small value that it'll basically trigger instantly after starting, essentially. So after that, uh, we're gonna do toggle actions. I did a, a video specifically on GreenSock toggle actions, and it's four different parameters or values that you specify in string format. GitHub Copilot's showing you exactly what I wanna use. So play. A none, none, reverse. What does that mean? Well, please watch that video. Just do a channel search. I'm too lazy to link it here. Um, <laughs> yeah, not very good quality control, but if you just go to channel and just type in toggle actions, you'll find it. But basically, these four values represent on enter, on leave, on enter back, on leave back. So the first two is when you're scrolling down and the target element um, enters the viewport, that's on enter. And then on leave is when the bottom of that target element is leaving, when you're scrolling down, it's going up past the viewport. On enter back is when you're scrolling back up and the bottom enters from the top as you're scrolling up. And then on leave back is when the opposite. So when you're scrolling up in the very top of it, I, of the, the element I is, is escaping the viewport. So. I, you can use a bunch of different like I, values, not just these three here, you can use, I, reset, complete, pause, none, all that. So we're gonna play it when, we, in it when it enters. Then we're not gonna do anything when it leaves. And also on, on uh, enter back, we're not gonna do anything, but we will reverse it. And you'll see how that, how that plays out in a second. Um, we're also gonna make this a scrub based animation. Uh, and we're gonna tie it to a value of one second thereafter. We could put true and I'll show you. I'll show you what the effects of this does in a second. But this right here, now that we defined the timeline, doesn't do anything. Uh, we first have to actually use it and create tweens. So we're gonna say timeline two, and we're gonna take a nav BG as the selector. And we're going to say, I uh, background is going to be white and opacity will be one. Now, I think we have to go back here. Did I set the opacity to zero? Oh yeah, I did, right here. So really, we don't even need this background here because we set it up here already. That makes sense. So let's go ahead and save this. And let's go, uh, let's see what we have. Okay, so as we can see, when we have it set to true, it's kind of like we get to 200 pixels. I have a scroll down, 200 is right there. It's an instant. I don't like that. So one of the ways we could fix that is just to say, uh, like put a value of like two seconds here. So watch what happens now. Notice how it fades. It's very cool, I like that a lot. Okay, so 
We can chain these, of course. So what we can say is we could take this over here. We can first hit enter, tab it in, and now we can chain another to or a from tween. And what we could say is uh, for this one, we're going to say SVG. Now the SVG is the icon for the little up arrow. So we're going to take that and put Y percent zero because remember we have it set to Y percent negative 100 by default. So now when I scroll down, there we go. But here's the problem, it's overlapping. So we want to move this over, this get a quote button and the class for that is CTA. So now all we have to do is put two and we'll say CTA and then we'll go ahead and specify X negative 50. And this is the same thing in CSS as saying something like translate or transform translate X uh, negative 50 pixels. So that's the same thing, it's just a shorthand um, to make your life easier. And then background color, we're gonna change the background color of that button from white to E9, 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 which happens to be a very light gray. Uh, because it was white by default, as you'll see, and then uh, we just want to make it light gray just so we could see it at right there. So here's what happens. If I zoom up, scroll down, we could see something not ideal happens though, because if for a split second, this is overlapping this because these are timeline-based sequence animations, and by default, when these run like this, then this this one right here is going to wait for the first one to complete to completely finish. Same thing with this one. This one right here is gonna wait for this one to finish. So to fix that, we're just gonna go ahead and put this right here, a third parameter. And we just simply put a less than sign, which means that this tween right here will start at the same time as this tween. Okay, save it, and that issue is gonna go away. So we go back up, and now they don't overlap. So check that out. Awesome, awesome, awesome stuff. Now. The final thing is this doesn't work. We click on it and nothing happens. It's clickable because I put cursor pointer on the SVG selector in CSS, but it doesn't actually bring us back to the top. Now what's cool is Lenis, the smooth scroll, scroll solution that we have is a, a great way. It gives us a method for easily tying, just going straight back up to the top. So I'll show you how that's done. We'll just come down here. We'll just do um, uh, scroll to top. And over here, all we have to say is, first, let's define a, a property um, so that we can reference our back to top SVG element. So all we have to do is just say um, const back to top in camel case equals document dot query selector is gonna be SVG itself. Obviously, I only have one SVG, so I'm not referencing it by a class name. Not a big deal. So now we say back to top add event listener, it's a click event. And what we say is lenis.scroll2, let's zoom up here so you can see this code. This is gonna be top, and then we open this up in an object for some settings, duration two seconds, you can adjust that to however you wish, and then also an ease. Um, for the easing, I'm gonna use this easing that I, I found, but I'm not gonna be able to really describe it because easing in math is just not my thing. <laughs> this is what it looks like though. And the easing, of course, is just gonna make it go from a standard linear animation when it's, when it's moving up at a constant speed to something goes like it starts slow or fast and then goes slow and then you know reverses or whatever. Not reverses, but it just slows back down. So it just gives us a nice animation. So now if I scroll down, we click it, it takes us right back up to the top. Look at that. And it nicely fades out in our, because we're using GreenSock animation platform, it's, it's intelligent, intelligent enough to know to reverse the animation because we use toggle actions up here with reverse in that last setting. All right, hopefully, I, you walked away with, some, with something that you know, you're gonna be able to apply this to a lot of other things. If you use this same kind of concept with the scroll trigger plugin, you can make all sorts of really cool animations, which is what I'm gonna be covering and am covering in the advanced front ends course. Make sure you go to designcourse.com forward slash AF to join that course. I am gonna be releasing a pre-launch with it very shortly. So I'll stop spamming you now. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you soon. Goodbye.